Uh, Nuk Karako. Uh, kia ora uh, e te mana whakawā, uh, huri noa te whare e mihi ati kia koutou katoa. Mr Speaker, uh, this is the first time I've had the opportunity to speak on a <coughs> omnibus bill and um, I believe it's also the, I take the last call um, on, this, uh, on this bill. Um, I suppose the first thing uh, is taking the last call and listening to the speeches in the House tonight. Um, it is important, I think, to acknowledge all of the good work uh, that is done from uh, members on both sides of the House, and particularly um, from all parties, and to acknowledge the Honourable Ruth Dyson, um, who chaired the, this committee um, in the 50th um, Parliament and the 51st, Dennis O'Rourke as well, um, and uh, Chris Arkenvold, who was mentioned, who's not here. And so, just to acknowledge all of those people um, and members that were responsible for getting the bill to this stage. Um, my colleague on the other side of the House um, mentioned a Māori word, tito, um, which was an interesting um, interpretation that you gave. But I suppose um, the word that I want to mention, particularly um, in talking about the collaboration on both sides of the House, the Māori word kotahitaka, um, which really means um, together, uh, uh, the togetherness of everyone in working in unison. Sir, so in saying that, um, I think the important thing um, is to acknowledge that. The next thing, um, the Statutes Amendment Bill, um, or bills, they may um, are to make short technical and in some might say boring changes uh, to existing legislation. Um, but the changes are not inconsequential. Um, the changes only make it to this House because they do matter and they are worth, I believe, uh, talking about. There are actually six that I, I would like to mention here um, that have really interested me and the first one which was alluded to um, by my learned colleague on the other side of the House. And um, as the chair of the Māori Affairs Select Committee, this one was of great interest to me. And this one, sir, <coughs> was the Ngāti Manuhiri Claim Settlement Act of uh, 2012. And sir, in that Clause 68, it addresses an error in the Ngāti Manuhiri Claim Settlement Act of uh, 2012, which puts the Act out of line with the Deed of Settlement. And the Deed of Settlement with Ngāti Manuhiri agreed that the iwi should have first refusal over Crown land in an area set out in the Trust Deed. But I think the important thing there is that the Trust Deed did not give Ngāti Manuhiri first refusal over land owned by Crown bodies. <coughs> it was only supposed to apply to land owned directly by the Crown. And so, looking at that, I understand now that Ngāti Manuhiri have been consulted on this change and are in agreement that the Act, as it stands, does not reflect the trust deed and therefore should be changed. It is good to see that consultation was carried out, sir, um, with the affected iwi. And I commend the Ngāti Manuhiri uh, people for agreeing to this change and being made in the spirit of the original trustee. And that again um, really reflects the kotahitaka um, in that and the goodwill as well. So that really also reflects the important um, uh, reasons why we have this sort of type of bill and this uh, type of legislation. So the next one, number two, um, is um, something that I think um, really does um, highlight the fact that uh, quite a small and possible insignificant um, thing could actually be quite big. And that one, to me, sir, was in the Births, Deaths, Marriages and Relationships Registration Act of 1995. Currently, if a New Zealand-born person wants to change their legal name, all that's required that they have to do is fill in a form, 
sign a statutory declaration and pay a fee. They do not need to provide any photo ID or even their birth certificate. Sir, this may have worked well in the past, um, but New Zealanders demand a higher level of security around their identity documents. And so this bill amends the Birth, Deaths and Marriages and Relationships Registration Act of 1995, and this allows the Registrar General to require evidence of identity before registering a name change. And I think that's really important, and particularly the day and age that we live in. So the next one um, concerns the Friendly Societies and Credit Union Act 1982. That one there, this government is committed, and it, it's a reflection on how committed this government is um, to reducing unnecessary bureaucracy, and a number of the changes in this bill are designed to do exactly that. Currently, the Registrar of Friendly Societies and Credit Unions is required to prepare an annual report and table it in Parliament. However, credit unions and insurers are now supervised by the Reserve Bank. There is no need for a report to Parliament, separate to that carried out by the Reserve Bank. This bill, sir, amends the Friendly Societies and Credit Union Act 1982 to remove this requirement. The next one, the local government, and a number of these actually have been, uh, they have been mentioned tonight, but they're pretty much just sort of in kind of passing. I was just sort of trying to give some detail because of the, the importance that I believe that these um, different changes um, are needed, and that's why I want to highlight them. But the local government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987 and the Official Information Act of 1982. That one's been mentioned, but I think the important thing, there are quite a number of changes being made, as we know, to Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987 and the Official Information Act of 1982. These acts exist to improve the access New Zealanders have to their government, and I think that's a real hallmark of where, where uh, this government is actually positioning itself uh, to enable that. And also to promote open and transparent local and central government. These changes to the Act seek to improve the transparency and the op openness. They also clarify some provisions which have already been in place but which have not been universally understood. So, we are clarifying that information held by a person engaged by a local authority as an independent contractor is deemed to be held by the local authority. This, as it should be, local councils often have good reason to use independent contractors to carry out work, but them choosing to do so should not result in the reduce and reduce transparency either deliberately or coincidentally. We're also clarifying that a request for official information under either of these acts does not need to refer to the act, sir, and can be communicated in any form. This bill will put beyond doubt that official information can be released electronically. Again, this reduces the bureaucracy that would be involved if anyone interpreted the current wording of the act to mean they needed to release information in paper form. There are further other or other changes to improve the way acts work and increase the transparency. Sir, this is a government that believes in reducing bureaucracy and ensuring that the laws on our statute books are accurate and up to date. These amendments, sir, are minor, technical and non-controversial, but they are very, very important, as has also, as this has been highlighted um, with the uh, speeches tonight in the House um, on this bill. Sir, I have no hesitation uh, to commend the Statutes Amendment Bill Number 4 to the House. Kia ora. Kia ora.